Welcome to Brother Owl's Garden. Thank you for stopping by. This is Lotus, and I'm Brian. I honor your presence here today. The topic that I would like to discuss with you is your sacred soul tribe. Now, there's other terms you can give it. You can call it um, your spirit collective. You can call it your holy family. You can call it your spirit, your spirit family, anything you want. But what I'm speaking of is the fact that we all belong to a group of souls who are our spirit family. We happen to be incarnate upon this earth right now, and some of those in our, in our sacred soul tribe, as I prefer to call it, some of those that are in our, our soul tribe may also be incarnate on this earth here as well. They may be younger or older than you. They may be in different places than you, or they may be with you in your life now. But they are here. They do exist. They are real. And they are accessible. And I dare say, they are eagerly awaiting you to acknowledge them for their consultation and their guidance that they are offering to you. Now, who exactly are the members of our sacred soul tribe? Well, I believe that there's a conglomeration. Obviously, our ancestors. You may think of grandparents, great-grandparents, um, loved ones who have, who have gone on before us, who have transitioned ahead of us. It is very likely that they are in this same soul tribe as well. Another category of souls that are in your soul tribe are your ascended masters. The ascended masters, the highest reaching spirits, the most ascended that are within your soul tribe, your, your own spiritual gurus in a way. You could also have gurus who are not bodily incarnate here, but who are accessible to you and who could belong to your sacred soul tribe. I don't see anything wrong with inviting them to join it or at least to participate amongst the, the sacred soul tribe that you belong to. Another group is, uh, as they call in, in the Hawaiian culture, they say Aumakua. Aumakua is, um, it's not exactly, but it's very similar to your, your totem or your spirit animal. Some people have a very, very powerful resonance with a certain animal spirit. It is the spirit as reflected in that animal and uh, you know this may be for some people could be a hummingbird it could be elephant it could be tiger for me it happens to be very distinctly the white owl by now you've probably caught on to that the white owl is my almakua I also have the green sea turtle I have I have an affinity with both but the white owl is most decisively my Almakua. And this is because of an experience where the white owl came to me. It appeared to me, it arrived to, to, to me, and it was very clear, it was telepathically communicating, but it was very clear. Uh, the message was, I am here to be with you and to help you. I have been sent, and I have been sent specifically to be with you. There was not, I belong to you, and all that. It was, I have been assigned and summoned to come and be with you, to assist you. And that was several years ago. And, you know, uh, you, you can have your favorite spirit animal, but they have to choose you. So this is what your sacred soul tribe um, looks like as we paint a clearer picture and of course I, I may have left out some others that it's possible could be involved but you have a sacred soul tribe and before you came to this planet and jumped into this earth suit you were with them and they helped you prepare for the lessons that you needed to learn and for the earth work that you needed to do which led to your arrival here. You are here to do your earth work, which is to improve yourself and learn the lessons you still haven't mastered 
that you still need to work on. The ones that Pema Chodron said uh, will never go away until you've mastered them. That's, that's a good one. All of the lessons that you need to learn, they will not stop appearing until you've mastered them. So you're here to do that work, and it's very most likely related to learning how to love and how to be loved. To learn love from every possible angle, some painful, some joyful, some receiving, some giving. But to learn love, you know, imagine love was this, this vast disco ball of facets, and you are to learn every one of those facets about love before you really get it, and before you are qualified to become it or I should say, ready to become it. I'm sorry, that's a better word. Until you are ready to become it. So you have this sacred soul tribe and they are accessible to you and they have been helping you throughout your whole life, oftentimes unthanked and unrealized and unaware. So now that you know for sure that you belong to a soul tribe and that they belong with you, you can invite them to pray with you when you pray. You can invite them to help you to have a better meditation. You can invite them to join you in a Reiki session. Now, I'm not talking about necromancy and spirit conjuring and mediumship and all that. That's a whole different topic. I'm talking about you can connect spiritually to your soul family and you can ask them for help and guidance. And I'm pretty sure it's safe to say they're more than happy to do it. And I would venture to say that there were times when you were the one being asked by someone who had been down here struggling. And maybe in the future you will be again. We probably all take turns. But you have a sacred soul tribe they are accessible. They will help you. They have helped you. And this is not contrary to any faith or any organized theology. So, talk to your sacred soul tribe. Welcome them and invite them to help you on your spiritual path. Bless them, thank them, and acknowledge them. They're waiting for you. Remember to always abide in thankfulness for your highest good in the most benevolent outcome of the divine will. <laughs>